APIs apply to one uh, very specific um, phenomenon, I would say, uh, and that is to say government. And in a way, uh, across the different streams that uh, this, this conference has brought uh, together, um, I hear some of the, so, some, some nearly philosophical questions right, have been raised about what is an API, how uh, do you design it, define it, how can you make more systems uh, behave more, uh, more like uh, APIs do. Um, and if you think of government, um, at, at, at some scale, it is really one of the most uh, complex systems that humans have, have, have designed and devised. Right? It, uh, it defends us, it defends our streets, our, our environment, uh, it educates our children, um, it organizes justice, um, the, 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 uh, sustains the economy as well. It is a really, really far-reaching system uh, and it's nearly as complex as uh, human societies can be. And now the question is, what can we gain and what can we learn uh, if we try to think of government more like uh, an API and as we would think of an API. And I don't want to uh, paint a, a beautiful dream or, or make some sort of a, of a uh, you know, very hopeful speech about how this could change everything. Uh, but the truth is that if you start thinking of government more like an API, something you can query, something you can actually write back to, something you can interact with uh, in, in, in those, uh, those ways, uh, then you begin to, to think of new strategies that can make government uh, better, more accountable, uh, more transparent, uh, and uh, better suited uh, to address the needs of the 21st century. And, and the main way through which, uh, and that's the, the project I will, I will uh, talk about, but the main way through which we have uh, sort of built this government as an API is through the open data strategy uh, that France has put forward uh, about two years ago and has built with uh, task force Etalab, which I'll, I'll talk about in a moment. And that is to say that with uh, this open data policy, uh, we have tried to build a platform strategy for open government. Platform strategy for open government, meaning that we want to make public data, uh, government data, so data uh, uh, produced, collected by uh, the government's administrations, uh, more open, more transparent, accessible to everyone online, easily reusable, meaning uh, free of charge, free of use, and free as in free software, and uh, easily reusable in a technological sense, meaning using formats that make it easier and easier, progressively easier uh, for developers to use it uh, and build new services out of it. And really the, the, the sort of higher level objective here uh, is threefold. The first one is accountability. We're talking about better accountability to citizens so that they can understand the process. They can understand how government works. They can also have a more uh, informed uh, opinion and a more informed public debate. So to one level, this is really sort of layer zero. If you have an API, you need to describe it, right? You need the handles, you need to have the, 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 the structure. So that's the first, the first step. Second one is transparency, and transparency intended as a tool of modernization. Right? Meaning that it transforms organizations by uh, breaking the silos, those information silos. And that's another uh, thing that APIs make. They make information more fluid. Uh, it makes it much easier to cross uh, data from different sources, to compare it, to, to mash it up. And that's the sort of second objective. So in open data as a tool for uh, the administration to uh, transform itself. And more importantly, and that leads into the third point, uh, it is a way for government uh, to tap into the expertise uh, of, the, of civil society in general, but more specifically developers, uh, startups, um, non-profits, uh, uh, citizens as well through crowdsourcing, but citizens that have the tools to reuse this data uh, and invent new ways, new services, new ways of, of uh, pursuing the public, the public good, uh, new, new companies as well, services that could not have existed without access to this data. Right, so that's the sort of overarching goal, and Etalab, uh, which I'm uh, here for and to represent, is, is the French, French government's uh, task force for open data that is tasked with making sure all the ministries, uh, so at the national level, right, not, not the cities, but at the national level, work together to make those formats accessible, uh, more easily comparable, and reusable 
uh, as easily as possible by as many people as possible. Now, the way to do this, and I'm talking about a government as a platform strategy, well, the best way to do this was to build our own digital platform. And that is data.gov.fr, which very simply speaking is a search engine uh, in which you can access listings of all the public data we've collected uh, in government, in the administration, uh, and uh, that is described by, um, by agents themselves. So imagine this whole network of people in the administration working to make all these data sets more transparent. And you can download them directly. So here is a, a, an important distinction. I, I was mentioning APIs as a model of how we can make government more open. That is not to say that we're building an API, a technical API for government. Data.gov.fr is a, uh, it's the first uh, beta version of an open data platform. Uh, it's evolving uh, constantly, but most of the work was actually in the back end uh, and was and has been uh, geared towards making it possible for more than uh, 200 people inside government, the different ministries, people who may not know each other, to collaborate uh, so that they could make this government this government data public and accessible online. So really from the, the, from the uh, end user, it's, it's a very simple site, search engine, you have listings of data sets that uh, are linked to your query, and you can download the raw data directly. So now that's an important, an important point, right? Raw data being accessible, uh, free, uh, with, with free access and, and, and free reuse. Uh, means you can get it. You, you can get away with it. You can uh, take this data and incorporate it in any mashup you're building or any system you're thinking of building, right? Uh, and that's one of the main reasons. And maybe we'll talk about it at the end. That we've uh, wanted to put all our efforts on making this data accessible before building, you know, sort of higher uh, value-added systems on top of it. Uh, for example, APIs. For example, visualizations tools. Uh, and so we really depend on developers and on this open data community uh, to use these data sets and then make, make them understandable and make them useful to the rest of the population. So raw data uh, freely and uh, easily accessible online, uh, that's the sort of you know, main building block. And data.gov.fr is also a, in a sense, crowdsourcing platform uh, for the needs uh, of developers who'd like to access data sets and incorporate them into their services. And when I say crowdsourcing, it's really because there's part of the platform is this open exchange, uh, you know, online, very, very classic uh, um, sort of, uh, well, I'm not, not really a social network, but you can actually create accounts and have discussions. But it's a platform that allows you to uh, make it known to the different public services which data sets you would need or which questions you need to have solved on the different data sets they publish. Um, and that is one of the most, most important blocks of a data-driven innovation process. Because at the end of the day, if uh, developers who try to reuse this data can't communicate with government, then we won't have the sort of benefits we're expecting from it. Right? So it's really important to, to try to foster as much as possible a discussion between uh, the, the, the services where the, these data sets are produced and whoever wants to reuse it. And that's what data.gov.fr is, is made for. And I guess the last point, and that's important in an in uh, international setting, is that we uh, are, are tasked with opening up government data at the national level, but we're open as well to all the, uh, the local uh, councils, the, the collectivité territoriale, so cities, departments, if you know the sort of structure of the French, uh, French local government, who would like to use it as a platform to open up their own data as well. And that's really a sort of virtuous process where we're trying to get as many people as possible. Uh, to make the data available and then make it possible uh, to, to have cross-references and comparisons at different national levels and then between different countries. Uh, and for example, we, we worked, I'll, I'll get to it in just a moment, but we've, we've worked a lot with the, uh, the British government on making sure that we had the sort of same strategies to publish our data and that we had comparable uh, legal instruments to uh, enable people to cross, uh, you know, cr cross-compare data sets from uh, Great Britain and from France uh, without any sort of legal um, hurdle or hassle. And so that's actually the, the next point. Uh, making sure that uh, the, data, the data sets that government pu publishes are um, reusable with, with no questions asked uh, and, and as, uh, as little 
sort of legal uh, work to do in order to understand exactly what you can do. Uh, it was one of the missions we, we had to, uh, uh, to handle. And so now uh, all, the, all the national level uh, government data that's published and made open online uh, is, is using, is published under this licence ouverte open licence. Uh, you may sort of see a graphic theme, right? It, it sort of looks like a, a tilted version of, uh, of uh, Creative Commons. Uh, well, that's not, that's not a mistake. It really is because this license, uh, it had to be a specific license because of the, 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 the legal uh, framework uh, that surrounds access to information in France. It's a law that was created in 1978, uh, back when access meant you know, knocking on the door and actually getting leaves of, uh, of, of paper with this information. Um, so we had to adapt uh, the sort of licenses to this, to this setting. Uh, but it really is, and it's actually explicitly uh, compatible with something like Creative Commons CC BY. And the interesting point here is that it is, it is also translated in, in English and uh, compatible with the um, uh, Great Britain's government, uh, open government license. Um, meaning, and that's a bit technical, but what you should try to get away from this is the fact that uh, our sort of virtual legal infrastructure for the publication of data uh, is inter interoperable uh, between France, Great Britain, and I hope at some point the entire European Union, maybe other countries as well. And so that makes it easier for inf information to uh, more, more freely flow uh, from those different platforms and for developers to gather as much information as is useful and as is possible. Right. So uh, quite quickly, just a few, I want to run through a few examples, but um, one of the reasons why open data is important, and again, that's in the, in the context of thinking of government as a, a platform and as an API, is that by getting more information on the way it works, you can actually have a better sense for its structure and for its performance, right? So uh, here's here are two examples of visualizations based on some of the data we've published or that has been published elsewhere. And what you see here, this map that's sort of, well, I hope you recognize France, right? Um, this is a map of all the car accidents that ever happened in France for the last 10 years. Now, at this level, it may not tell you uh, much, but uh, when you zoom in, on the level of local councils and cities, it's actually a very important tool for local decision making. So this sort of transparency makes it much easier at a local level to you know, discuss how the road plan should be changed and what sort of policy decisions should be made. Another example that's sort of striking, so I always add this one is, uh, and to, to show the, the sort of power of transparency, right? This is uh, Manhattan, this is New York City. And uh, the New York Health Department actually publishes raw data on restaurant ratings. So you may not see it, but what that means is every dot here is a restaurant. If it's blue, it's pretty much safe. If it's green, you should sort of like, you know, wash your hands and all, you should always do it. Uh, if it's orange, I, I would just run away, right? <laughs> Violations include uh, evidence of rodents, evidence of insects, uh, personal hygiene issues. So I'm not, <laughs> not going to go into the details, right? But that is, that, that's what we're talking about. And of, of course, this is a very direct way of showing the power of transparency. But it really is a transformational process. And as in an API-driven ecosystem, uh, whenever you publish uh, the data from your platform and you make your platform open, uh, it means the developers who are using it, and that is in a broader meaning all, all citizens, right, can leave, lead uh, healthier lives can have more uh, informed choices. So that's something that's very fundamentally important. Uh, and another, another example of how you know, better information is actually an innovation process as well uh, is, that's a, a kind of nice example. You can see the background, but it's an Android app. And it takes data sets from, in this case, the city of Paris uh, with the position of all the schools, uh, the hospitals, uh, the uh, cultural life, and all these things that you may uh, want to know when, you, for example, you first join the city and you want to find a place to live. And it makes it way easier for you to compute wherever you should live. You know, if I have kids and I need to be close to a school, uh, if I have elderly parents and I need to be close to a hospital maybe, that sort of stuff uh, can actually become extremely useful. And it was developed in, developed in uh, I think, less than 48 hours during a hackathon. Uh, and that shows you the power of you know, combining open data sets and developers, just like when you open an API. And I guess the sort of a professional version of this uh, is 
Home and Go. It's one of the startups that we've uh, actually distinguished as one of the most promising ones in, in France. And I'll get to the, the next one in a second. <laughs> Uh, web shell that, that one of the organizers um, because it brings this idea to a more professional level where it makes it possible for everyone who wants to try to find an apartment uh, to compare the different data sets and really choose what's the most uh, what, what's the best option for them and so we're actually helping startups uh, develop so we're helping growth and we're helping the creation of jobs which at another level is one of the functions of government at least trying to support Right, the creation of, uh, of activity. Uh, so maybe a, a quick word uh, of, of wrap-up on this idea of a um, community and an ecosystem. Um, few APIs have been really successful, uh, and I'm talking about technical APIs, physical you know, systems that get open. Few have been really helpful and, and successful without uh, some work uh, to convince developers to convince users that these APIs are actually uh, something, something important, that they're something that helps you do your work better or in a, in a new way. Right? Think of uh, Twitter's API, think of Foursquare's API, they have evangelists uh, who actually work with uh, startups and work with developers to make it easier for them to develop those applications that in turn make the data from the API useful. And so in a, in a, in a, in a word, we've decided uh, after we had built the uh, supply for data, uh, by releasing data.gov.fr at the end of last year, in um, actually December 5th, 2011, so it's about a year, um, we decided in early 2012 to launch a, a community, an ecosystem of uh, developers, projects, startups, uh, working on open data and asking ourselves how can we support their development and the growth. And uh, being government, we had a, a, a natural position as a sort of platform to gather other actors. So what we did is we contacted um, about 30 partners, and I'll come to them in a moment, um, just to give you a sort of snapshot. Uh, and we, we told them, get together, get around the same table, and we'll make it so that we can support the growth of these different projects. If they need technical resources, they're gonna come to you. If they need you know, investments, they may be, uh, maybe they'll have a better, you know, an easier access uh, to your, to your uh, deal flow. Uh, if they need uh, research, then maybe you can put them in touch, in touch with your, your researchers. Uh, and this initiative is called Data Connections, because at the end of the day, it's the connections between the, uh, the actors in the ecosystem that make it, makes it uh, possible for them uh, to develop their projects in the long term and to make it more than just you know, one-shot development, but actually build them into companies, build them into nonprofits, uh, build them into transformational projects uh, of the kind we're trying to, to, uh, to help uh, develop here and uh, so just wrapping up a little bit through, through going through the different partners of course uh, Google Microsoft Orange so you know large actors of the digital economy were in, in, so, so, so have been supporting this um, what's really interesting as well is that some more traditional uh, companies have decided that this was something that could really help the customers as well uh, so SNCF the French train company uh, La Poste the French snail mail company um, Veolia is, is not shown here, but it's uh, a, a water company as well. So, you know, like huge water pipes. And for all of these actors, access to data is actually transforming the way they work. And so helping startups that have this expertise uh, is a way to make their services more usable for their customers. And uh, around all these actors, we've brought together uh, schools. Uh, the EPTA is actually where we're here, where we're today, is, is one of the partners of this initiative. Uh, we've brought together uh, investors, uh, we brought together media as well that can help these startups get more exposure. And uh, Data Connection um, is organized as a series of contests, at the end of which we bring the best projects together, we put them on stage, and this is what happens. Well, that's a, I guess another one. This is what happens, and I'm sure you can see this guy here at the back of the, back of the room. <laughs> and uh, that is to show that when you, when you try to bring uh, together some of the most successful you know, product and projects uh, based on open data. At the end of the day, you're nurturing an ecosystem and it starts living its own life. Uh, it starts, I guess, organizing events like the one that brings us today uh, t together. And, um, and hopefully we will see these companies and we will see the people supporting these companies uh, build a long-term success with you know, more efficient services, new, uh, new companies, uh, new public services as well, new ways of working with government. And that's maybe the most, uh, um, the most striking way in which 
this initiative uh, is more than a, a sort of event platform, but really a, a, akin to an API platform and a platform strategy. So um, to wrap it up and, and talk about the lessons learned, uh, and before before I take a few questions, um, I think one of the one of the things that this initiative has shown is that y you can think uh, and you can try to make government more uh, m more akin to a, a read API, right? So you you, you basically get the the get uh, handle and, and and you make it uh, possible for people to read uh, data, to have more transparency, to understand better, and to build on top of these things. Uh, but what's also essential in, 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 a, in uh, a successful API uh, is the way you build the feedback loop from uh, whatever eco ecosystem you're building and from the users of these applications that have been developed on top of your platform. And if you think of government this way, then it really becomes about how, how do we make it possible for the general public to have a say in the way those systems are developed, those applications are developed, in the way uh, in, in the way government actually functions and the decisions it makes. And at what level what we're describing here really is democracy. And so the question at hand, that's I guess what I'm going to leave you with, is how do we use uh, APIs and how do we use open government uh, techniques and initiatives to make our governments run better in the 21st century? And with that, I guess. If you have any questions on what I just described, or any comments to make, I'm happy to take and open it to the floor. Yeah, I have a question um, regarding the um, range of actions possible for the API. I mean, you've shown examples about, you just said it, but mm -hmm. reading data. But is there a government strategy to do more through an API? Because it's not just to get, it's mm -hmm. to put or update records, things like I'm thinking of use cases. Really interesting to do through an API, like automating filling in data or interacting with administration, uh, or maybe the government acting as a notary for online services because you own the identity, the official identity papers for people. Mm -hmm. Are there any plans for the French government to do that? So, what you describe is a very, very broad reality, right? So, that in a sense, we could say that is a, a, an objective, a long term objective. Uh, but as of today, uh, data.gov.fr is actually functioning, functioning as a sort of two-way API in a very, um, it, it's still a bit of a prototype in a sense because it really uh, encompasses only the, the most basic feedback channels and, uh, and engagement uh, channels. Uh, but uh, what you can do today on, uh, on, on this, this platform, on this website, is access data sets, launch queries, and then download them, so this is really the get part. But then, and that's what really becomes more interesting and, and that has started to drive a lot of uh, you know, the direction in which we go to, to, to make more data uh, available, uh, is that you can actually ask questions of the people, uh, to the people who have put these data sets online. So for example, you download something and you don't understand how the different columns uh, are, are structured or what does it mean, right? Well. If you're the first one to do it, then you may have to ask a question to the person who, uh, who actually has uploaded this. But what happens then is that this is a crowdsourcing platform, so the questions you've asked and the answers you, you, you've gotten are attached to the data set. And this is really the beginning, but it's the sort of seed of a broader um, knowledge, knowledge source and knowledge platform, right? Yeah. Okay. Here you go. I have a question more about um, data content, data in the context of European uh, Union. Mm -hmm. uh, I had some experience with the open data of different countries, and uh, most of the time, and I also look on the other side for the data growth affair. Mm -hmm. I mean, for data growth affair, it's obviously everything in French, mm -hmm. so I can understand. For German data, it's also everything in German. Uh, and this is not really a big problem as long as we have a common vocabulary, a common semantic for the metadata. Mm -hmm. what, is your, what is your stake on this and what are the efforts uh, you are taking on this? So, uh, I think there are sort of, well, there are two, two levels on which we can work on this. And you're right that uh, in an ideal world, uh, having you know, exactly the same description for all the data sets in different countries uh, with easily translatable you know, metadata keywords uh, would, be, would be ideal. Uh, now, the, the, the first thing to keep in mind is that throughout the European Union, uh, the member states are all very different. They have different languages, of course, but also different cultures. 
and different ways to organize uh, government, local government, uh, national government, federal government in the case of, of Germany, for example. So that's the first uh, limit. And, uh, and of course, describing data sets by, um, by, by the, the public agents um, who, who, whose, whose work it is, uh, it needs to be done in the language in which they work. Uh, but a first, uh, first sort of way we can counteract that, that problem, that fragmentation problem, is by making it easy uh, to search in different languages and uh, get, you know, get results by, with a keyword that, with, with a query that you've written in your own language. That's the first sort of step. And we, we're not there yet, but we are progressing towards such a thing. I don't know if or when we'd be able to, to do it, but uh, the vocabulary of keywords uh, that data.goop.fr uses to describe data sets uh, is actually a translatable and translated uh, vocabulary. Um, it's called Eurovoc, and it's a vocabulary that at the European uh, Union level uh, makes it possible for each keyword to have equivalents in all the languages of, of the Union. And I guess the second, the second element of your question is how do we work together at the level of the, the EU uh, to make all the different open data platforms uh, more interoperable and also more, uh, more connected. And uh, I, I don't have I, milestones and, and dates in, in, in mind, but I know that the European Union is working in the future uh, on the project that will allow all the open data sets from all the, the, the national and the local governments to be registered in one place. And that's, of course, a very important goal in the, in, in the future. Is there a kind of governance regarding the applications being developed under all the data and the data sets? I mean, anyone can develop an application or is there a kind of marketplace where all the applications are available and if I put my citizen shoes, uh, that's the place where I can find trusted and certified applications? Mm -hmm. This kind of stuff? Is it something that can be done? So, no, it's a very important question. There, there are, uh, again, two ways of looking at it. Uh, the first one is that this platform is a way to make uh, government more transparent using uh, the sort of latest tools that we can now um, leverage uh, for, for, to, to modernize government. Uh, so, in a sense, the first, uh, the, the first key objective is transparency. And so what we've tried to do is to make it as open as possible so people can download data sets, do whatever they want with it. They don't have to report it to us. They don't have, the only thing you do when you use those data sets is you comply with the license, but the license is basically saying this is what the law is, just keep it in mind. And the law says uh, you can do what you want as long as you're not breaking other laws and, and, and these things. So it's, it's really a sort of uh, fluid process as much as it is possible. Uh, now, of course, First of all, for you know, our personal interest and, and, and motivation in this project and, and, and to, to show uh, the rest of the administration how important this is, uh, it, it's really important for us to keep track of what is being done and keep track of these applications. So uh, we, we interact through things like data connections, through meetings like this one. We try to interact with developers who are using, who could use our data sets to build applications. Uh, and at some point it could be interesting and that's one of the, the things we we're continuously, it's, it's really a sort of iterative process, right? Um, and, and agile development for the platform, and that's going to be the last question. Sorry, guys. Um, but, um, okay, uh, j just to say that this is one of the, the things we could be working on. Uh, it may be something that happens in a broader context, but at some point, uh, that's really what data connection is about. It's putting forward the new services that have been built on this data. And I guess to wrap it up, that really, is one of the key aspects of this open government uh, platform and an API strategy. <laughs>